Hello guys, you're welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so in this one, I'm going to be taking you step-by-step -step guide on how I will approach this image. When I say approach it, I mean from scratch to finish everything done right here. So it's going to be an amazing one. Trust me, it's going to be a long video here, but you will learn a whole lot. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. The first thing I'm going to be doing on this image is to crop it because I want it to have quite some space. So I'll just crop here, yeah? make sure that my content that way is turned on. I can decide to push the headroom up a little more. Now press enter to see what I get. All right, so we are done. This is good. All right, so the next thing I want to do is quickly take care of my frequency suppression. So I'm going to be using this action over here. If you saw our previous video, yeah, the previous video we posted before this one, this action was made available for free. So if you couldn't get your own, just go back, watch the video. You know how to get access to the action so that you can as well practice and learn. So let's quickly get started. I'm going to run my frequency separation. So I'm keeping this one at three because the image doesn't have a lot of details that much. So I'll keep it somewhere at three, then open it up and pick up my mixer brush. My setting is 33, 31. That is my wet and flow. The two in between are inconsequential. So I'm just going to quickly start painting over my object. So I'll turn off my high frequency so I could just be looking at my tones as I work on it. So intermediately, you can turn on and off to see the result of what you are doing. So we'll just come over to the body. Let me quickly show you what we did with the face is up. So you notice I'm not spending a lot of time doing this because the main essence of your frequency separation or skin retouching as the case may be is to keep your images as natural as possible, even though you are trying to make it to look as flawless as you can. Yeah, so that's the main essence of the whole thing. Without it, I don't think we are doing making any headway so it's very simple you paint where it's necessary spend time where it's necessary or do not do too much okay so once that is done i'm going to turn on my high frequency so you can see overall what we've done the before the after the before the after so you see how we've been able to make this image look even clean without doing a whole lot we've not done our dodging and burning and we're already getting something very very clean so the idea is just to keep your images realistic but still as flawless as possible so the next thing we are going to be doing is our dodging and burning so i'm going to collapse the group and quickly load up my dodge and burn so i'll first of all load the dodge then load the bomb before i load my db check layer so that i can have it above all of them so picking up my brush, I'll go to my dodge, keep my flow at three. Make sure your black and white uh, foreground and background is selected. Okay, so let's quickly start painting over our object. So the black areas are obviously where our dodges are and the white areas are obviously where our bonds are. So with that in mind, we are going to just quickly paint over like this. Very good. So I'm just trying to make the highlights even brighter. Trying to make the highlights even brighter. So you notice that it's looking dark, but when I turn it off, that's my check layer. You notice that that area that was getting dimmer is getting brighter. Yeah, that's the essence of the whole thing. So just the areas that need highlight, we make sure we put enough highlight on them to give it that kind of three-dimensionality three look. See the eyes over here. Look at the forehead. Very important for me. 
all right see this area paint your highlights do the same thing over the smile lines okay i think we need a little here do the same thing over here as well all right so once you are done with that part you can come over to the body look at the cleavage over here so we'll just make it a bit darker good then for the arm look at this area we'll just make it very dark because i want this place to be very 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 highlighted so i'll just spend time on that particular spot then draw it down a little just like this Let's check. Beautiful. This is good. So we'll come over to the leg. I think I'm seeing a little shadow here. So I'll just make it slightly darker. Good one. Then we'll move over to our bun. Directly opposite of everything we've done. So we'll just come over here. We'll make it bright. Come over to the nose area. Very important. We'll make it bright. To the eye area here. We'll make it bright. We'll make it bright. We'll brighten up this part of the nose. Brighten out this part of the object, brighten up this part, connect it directly. So the whole idea is to get something very, very three-dimensional. Do the same thing over here. Good. So we'll zoom out, come over to the body. So we'll notice that here is in the shadow. So we'll darken it up. Darken up the side of the arm. Yeah. So if you notice I'm not spending a lot of time in the bomb so that we don't end up getting a very dark image. Good. So we can now turn off the check layer, match the dot and bond together and see what we created. Ctrl G can delete this. I don't need it again. The before, the after, the before, the after. So you see the way we've been able to even make the image look more three-dimensional than what it was looking like before. So the next thing I want to do is I want to pull the colors down. Then I will start doing uh, color grading individually so how do we do that i'm going to introduce a photo filter that cools down which is the cooling filter yeah so that i can get everything down okay so i'm going to match all this up together because we need to start working on the background so the first thing i'm noticing here is that my hair has a little green tint so i'm going to go to my color balance go into my shadows and just add a little magenta those are as tiny as two points or three let's try it at uh it is obviously too much yeah we'll keep it at four keep it at four the before the after very good so that green tint is gone although i'm seeing it on my skin which i do not want i'll press ctrl i pick up my flow back to 100 and just paint it over the hair yeah i just paint it over the hair that's just a very quick one very good so the next thing to do right now is to separate our object from our background so i'm going to make a selection of my object all right so with our selection perfectly done i'm going to duplicate my background right click and go to the have here cut so i have my background on a separate layer on my object so the first thing i want to do is i want to get a very beautiful wine red on my background so to do that i'll go to my solid color pick up oh this is beautiful uh, Oh, we're going for a wine red, so we'll stay somewhere around here. Press OK. Change the blend mode to soft light. Yeah, very good. So the before, the after. So you see the way it pops out. The next thing is to create a, an orange gradient behind her head. So it can, can cause a separation between her and the background. So we'll just get an orange gradient over there. Do the same thing so we can go for something darker and this one press ok so you can decide to of course change the blend mode if you feel it's not what you want and change decide to change the blend mode to whatever you want to do but i just want to reduce it of course the reason i had to leave it at lighting is that it's almost looking like what my normal was giving so i just have to reduce it the before the after so it gives us that separation between our objects and our background so the next thing is to take care of our dress it's looking a little bit desaturated and all of that so i'll go to my filter go to camera raw then go to my basic first of all reduce my highlight and increase my exposure just slightly or maybe push up the highlight so that our whites will be white then we'll go to our color mixer push up the blues on her dress very important push up the blues on her dress and i think that basically is what we need to do there then the next thing we need to do is to add some color gradients to her skin so i'm going to load out the color lookup i'm going to be using 
So we are working with our color lookup table brown skin. Yeah. Like I said, if you saw our previous video as well, this color lookup was also given us for free access at the video. So we'll just keep the description of the video or the video will just pop up the exact one where you get this color grading, this uh, particular color lookup will just pop up on your screen so you could see exactly the video you should look out for now i like it but i've not like it on the whole image i just want it on her skin because it's desaturating everything we worked on so how do we separate it we'll go to our object make a duplicate create a mask for it go to select and go to color range yeah our object is already selected or rather our skin is already selected we'll just use the mask to replace that of the color lookup and we'll have it just where we need it. Except for the fact that it's spilling on some areas which we can just clean off like this. Check out the other areas. Very good. We are good. So of course we need to drop that down a little. Bring it down a bit. Yeah. So apply just a little more color grading because I need her to go towards a saturated warm tone. So, but before we move over to that, we'll just have to brighten her up a little with yeah. So we we'll have to clip the mask, clip the curve on the object and just brighten her up a little. Beautiful. Can lift up the shadows again. Nice. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer for everything. Take the object to take my image rather to camera roll. So I want to get some saturation on her. So I'm going to pop up my vibrance a little. Very good because I needed to get that saturation on her skin tone. Uh, make things slightly brighter. Lift up my shadows a little. Then go back to my color mixer and even give her blues some more colors over there. Can even use our calibration to just pop things up a little then. Cool the overall palette down. Something like that. And we are good. So it's very subtle changes that we did here. If you look at the before and after, you notice that we didn't actually affect much, but her white is whiter, her dress is more saturated, and her skin got just a little bit of tiny saturation. Then looking at it right now, I think I can make the red on the background even more saturated by just taking it up a little and pushing the hues back slightly. Yeah, so you notice that our red is becoming even more interesting. Then you can decide to create a vignette effect if you wish, but I do not wish I'll press OK and we are good to go. So the last thing is I'm going to apply my done for you retouch action. Let's see what it does to our final result. So like I always tell you in the video, I like applying my done for you when I'm done with everything I want to do so that we'll see the final result we get at the end of the day. So I'll keep it somewhere around 30, the same number we used and see what it does. Very good. This is beautiful. But of course, too much the before, the after, but the after. So we just have to pull it down a little. Keep it somewhere around 40. Nice. All right. So guys, we are done. Let me do a, a snapshot so I can show you exactly what we've created. So this was the image when we started. Woo, the big by a lot. So this was the image when we started. This is the final result we got at the end of the day. One more time, the before and the after. So if you skipped any particular part of this video, I would advise you go back, watch them through so that you can understand everything we did. Like I said, we did it step by step guide and you saw it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. If you have subscribed, do make sure you turn on the notification bell so you get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you on the next one.